up guys welcome back to another vlog night from so speed it look like a beast the car like a freak absolute animal like a beast put so much time and money into this car and I'm proud of the outcome you guys haven't seen my video a uh, while back before I talked about how it's not really my dream car this never was my dream car I never see myself owning like a 435 or even like a, the M variants like the M4 or the M3 428 wherever case may be I'm more of a big body kind of guy but decided to downsize get something a little smaller and voila so I don't know I like it now I kind of like what I turned it into I turned it into my little beast you know it scares the shit out of me uh, nine times out of ten I'm gonna tell you guys how I keep my car from I guess crapping out on me uh, specifically just engine and transmission you know because everything else is pretty much subjective you know suspension if you live in certain areas your suspension is going to last a little longer if you live in crappy pothole areas it's going to last a lot less longer again this video before we start anything i want to stress to you guys never deviate from your plan now obviously i'm referring to as far as cars but just anything any goal you have never deviate unless you come up with a logical reason why I am always the type of guy that do performance over looks. I don't give a damn how the car looks as long as it performs good. Now, that being said, I don't want it to look like a complete shit box, but I also don't want it to ride like a shit box because of something that I installed. If you guys don't know now, I'm talking about these goddamn Super Sport Springs. Oh my God. I feel like it's starting to get really bouncy out of nowhere. Maybe it's because it's tuning up and I'm actually starting to go faster but never deviate from your plan. My last BMW, I jumped straight to a coilover, never really liked the idea of lowering springs. And the sake of being cheap, saving a couple dollars, I decided to jump to lowering springs because I wanted to look a little lower. The sucker's a little bouncy. It's low, it's scrapes on every goddamn thing, and when you hit a bump, it feel like you didn't crash into somebody. One thing I have to say is these motor and transmission or setup, whatever you want to say, really reliable. There's but so many things you can do uh, that will kill it, you know. Uh, this is the M55. Now, BMW made uh, what I think like a couple different variants of this motor. You know, you got the ones that were in the E chassis cars, uh, you have the ones that's in the F body cars, like uh, pre LCI and then post LCI. I'm not gonna break it down too much, like the codes of it. Then you have the, I guess, the final one, which you'll find, I think, the X4. Uh, Ford M40i and the M2. Those are the fastest, toughest M55s that they make, actually. The variation between um, pneumatic wastegate and electronic wastegate. Electronic wastegate, 2014 models and up. So much better than the pneumatics. That's just an older, weaker design. Fun fact, the 65,000 mile review I did exactly right here. That's kind of why I wanted to do this one. Most part, is that it's special. I don't have no special flux capacitor or something like that. Uh, and, and I feel the same way about um, giving you guys tips and tricks to make these motors last. There's not really any hidden secrets or well-kept secrets or whatever the case would be. You just gotta maintain the car. One of the most, that's, that's not, that's a little, I'm missing a cap right there. I probably took it off one time because this is the positive side, so I don't want that to arc on anything. Because you know me, I get the flinging and swinging some tools around and then, you know? But anyway, uh, yeah, so there's not really much. Um, one of the things that I swear by is just never let it starve on oil. If you one quart, pull over. Pull over, put some oil in the sucker. Um, that actually happened to me. You might not find the exact oil weight, or if you run in Liquid Molly uh, 540 and you find uh, Pennzoil 540 or 040, you know, I don't care what nobody says. If you want to roll and that's all you find, I'm not talking about don't put no 020 type. You know, don't go too far off. But I mean, honestly, if it's running really low oil, uh, I, I personally put anything in it, oil-wise. You know, I know they BMW have the approved oil and stuff like that, but I'd much rather have something in there rather than nothing, you know? And you know I run my car hard. These cars get really hot. So, obviously, I recommend, you know, flushing, um, draining it out, get a proper oil change later on, but just don't start these things in oil. These cars are not designed for tracking. I'm not talking about just suspension. The motor itself. You're going around a big sweep or a crazy on ramp, or you're giving it all you got, and all that and all that oil tends to sit on the side a little bit. The oil pickup tube obviously does not pick up the oil, and you starve the engine of oil, and the car will literally lock on you right there. Uh, that goes for a lot of donuts. So doing a lot of donuts in this, anything that pulls heavy G's, like when you swing it in the corner, left and right. That can kill his motor. Oil pan in the M2s and the M235R, which I did research on, 
because uh, I've never even seen an M235i R in my life. But their oil pan sits a lot different. They have baffles in it, and it's two oil pickup tubes so that when you corner in, the oil will still be able to get picked up and keep the engine lubricated. So that's one of the reasons I was doing my research before I bought all this money in suspension to make this thing a track build. I did my research and I realized that, hey, it can't happen because, well, I gotta convert the oil pan over to a M2 M55 oil pan. Can it be done? Possibly. Will I do it? No. It's food for thought for any of you guys out there. Maybe it's added protection so you guys could possibly prevent uh, seizing up your M55. The other thing on these motors that can kill it and it sucks because it's such a cheap way uh, for your motor to go. They're all cheap ways. They can all be prevented as well. Uh, the serpentine belt. Now the serpentine belt and the pulleys have a tendency to go on cars in general. All cars. So if you look under the hood, you see a serpentine belt. It's a little worn out. You know you haven't changed it in a couple tens of thousands of miles. You might want to just go ahead, uh, go on FCP Euro, get a serpentine belt, the whole kit. About $100 and change, and it comes with two pulleys and a belt, if I'm not mistaken. You'll notice if it's squeaking, howling, or just looks crappy and frayed up, you don't want this belt to snap. Belt wraps around the inside of the pulley, right behind the pulley, the crank pulley, and it gets sucked into the front seal. Now, you might not notice it, it'll still run, but some of that rubber gets caught up in the oil pan and that could eventually starve the engine of oil because it'll go through the pickup tube and block it. It's been rare, but I've heard of cases like that. It might suck, but if your belt snaps and you replace your belt, you can still drive it, but I would recommend taking it to a shop, having them drop the oil pan and clean out just in case there might be some remnants of belt, serpentine belt in the oil pan. I know that might sound like a lot, and I'm not saying that that'll happen to every single car. I'm just saying it's a possibility. Throwing it out there for you guys. One thing on these cars, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but this car has a bunch of radiators in the front. I'm not sure if the ones that come with, with the fog lights have the same setup as mine. I just know mine didn't come with the fog lights because they have different radiators in the front. So if you look down here, we got the oil cooler. We got the inner cooler. We got the regular radiator. I want to say either trans or power steering. And over here you have some auxiliary cooler as well. Uh, don't quote me on where these things go. I'd be forgetting from time to time. What ends up happening is these radiators help cool down these fluids in these cars because these cars tend to run really, really freaking hot. And uh, like I said, heat kills a lot of stuff. Now, what else kills stuff is uh, leaks. And how you can get certain leaks like this is maybe a rock uh, might get caught up, jammed, hit, and damage one of these components. Now, in a cooler, it's not really the biggest deal. But things that hold fluid, like uh, your oil, that's very essential, radiator, things of that nature, even your condenser, uh, you want to get that replaced. Uh, the M3s and the M4s, F80 style, uh, the oil cooler actually sits right on the bottom underneath. So if anything underneath, maybe you run it over, you could damage that and potentially grenade your motor. You got to be careful about who you're driving around with, who you're riding with, whatever case may be because uh, people don't like to keep their exhausts on all the way or pieces underneath their car. They don't like to keep them on all the way. And if you're tailing somebody, maybe you're driving spiritedly, whatever the case may be, uh, or you're hanging out with your buddy, and their car piece or her, his, whatever car piece goes and hits anything in this area has the potential of damaging, obviously, the bumper, the guards, and the uh, one of the radiators. And if you don't catch that, like me, my car is a high RPMs, like 99% of the time, you can grenade the motor and it'll cost a lot of money to repair. So now I, I kind of talked to you guys a little bit about uh, ways that you could lose oil or be underfilled or whatever case would be. Now, just always remember when you're doing oil changes, put the right oil in here. I spoke to you guys about that before. BMW from the dealership, I think drops 5W30 in here, but this car is big boost turbo. Freaking, there's a lot done to it. Running at higher RPMs, like I said, put 5W30 oil in here, it literally burns through the oil. 5W40 works for me. Uh, I have no issues with that. I personally use Liquid Molly from uh, FCP Euro. We have other little things that can make these cars run rough, you know, arc plugs, coil packs, I mean, intake leaks, exhaust leaks. There's so many different ways for these cars to run rough. You can run them rich, you can run them lean to an extent because these motors, a lot of new motors run lean as hell anyway for some weird reason. But um, you can run these motors a little bit leaner than normal um, for a bit and you can run a rich you can run any motor rich all day the, the, the exhaust is no catching so yeah you can run a rich it don't matter you don't damage anything for real but getting down by a long shot because you can do all that stuff and these motors will still work it'll be operationable might not be optimal and efficient but it'll still work number one thing you got to be on is oil 
And some of the things you can look for in these cars, oil leaks as well. Pretty much figured out where majority of the oil leaks will come from. Uh, your oil filter housing gasket, valve cover gasket, even the cap. The oil cap, it can leak out of there as well. Looks like mine is now actually, doesn't it? The oil pan, that's pretty much, I mean, anywhere there's a seal, there's a front main seal, rear main seal. You might have a couple rear main seal issues, but that is also linked to the PCV system. So if you having PCV issues, positive crankcase uh, pressure, and you decide you wanna get on a car all the time, you're gonna blow out a seal. That, uh, so you wanna stay on top of that as well. But that goes back into the leaking of the oil and this thing. All of that stuff goes around leaking the oil. Faulty PCVs, you blow a seal, you're gonna leak oil. Um, that's pretty much the root of blowing these motors up. Everything else will pretty much work for you. You see all the models due to it, but at the end of the day, the motor is stock. It's a stock block. I have tons of bolt-ons. They are bolt-ons. Even the turbo is a bolt-on, for crying out loud. But the motor itself is stock. There's nothing done to it at all. So this thing is pushing out. Now, beware, the older M55s, no matter which gate, or maybe the E-Series ones, if I'm not mistaken, the raw bearings, I heard, go on them a little bit more. They're not the most reliable ones. They're the ones in the beginning. Uh, they're not as bad as the M54, but they're not as great as the new electronic wastegate M55s. So that comes into play as well. These 2014 plus BMWs, the only ones I really recommend. If you're getting a 335, uh, 2014 or plus, uh, you ju it's just a lot more bang for your buck. You know, you get the new iDrive stuff, and then you get the better upgraded engine and electronics. With that being said, they're really cheap. You can grab one of these things for dog shit cheap. And you know, you drive the piss out of them and enjoy it as long as you keep it maintained. So this is what I was saying about some of the leaks. You can see I'm leaking over here at the oil cooler attachment. And that filter housing gasket is not leaking. Uh, however, over here is. Uh, I talked to you about the cap. If you look over here, I have some kind of residue look like it's coming out of the cap. So what will happen is, you know, you could just replace, I guess it's a seal or something on the end. But I think so because uh, you can see some oil developing right here. You can take a look at it. I replaced the whole valve cover before, so that should be okay. Uh, those are some of the places you can find oil leaks also underneath an uh, oil pan. You can look out for it if you want. Uh, you know, like I said, it's not the biggest alarming thing as far as these small gasket leaks, but you would want to take care of stuff like that so that you could preserve your engine. Personally, a lot of people don't like the fact that I took the BMW cover off. Some people actually design them. I know there's like an M2 carbon fiber cover for like a thousand dollars. I don't know who in their right mind be having the money to buy stuff like that. Seriously, once you close the hood, you don't even see it. So, I mean, hey, listen, I like it. It's a business end. You pop the hood. I used to blow coils and spark plugs left and right, probably because they were improperly gapped. But you just pop it right here, boop, boop, take it out, pop it in. No big deal. I ain't got to fumble with no stupid cover. Hey, works for some people doesn't work for others so coming on the side you can't see the transmission but this is a tranny by zf it's a zf 8hp 45 something and the main thing with torque converter transmissions they can take pretty much anything except for except for excessive slip in the clutches and heat heat torque converter trans heat is what kills it because the fluid is pretty much what drives the damn transmission uh for the most part you don't really need to service these things much but if you don't have a trans oil cooler definitely definitely pick one up if you're running your car big boost turbo and you're tuning the trans it's great to tune them but make sure the fluids don't get hot like i said these cars will tell you anything it'll tell you if the trans fluid is hot oil is hot it, it, it'll tell you to so just listen and that'll pretty much save it like i said i don't do anything special but listen and i beat the crap out of my car and i mean still forgot to mention last but definitely not least this video this video is sponsored by European art. So you guys know I'm DIY everything. If I could DIY it, I'll do it. DIY means do it yourself, but there's a way that I could do it, I will. However, sometimes it's not all about skills, it's all about time and money, I would say. So sometimes it might cost you less of a headache, money, or just time to so go ahead and, I mean, let the professionals do it. You know, I know how to do a bunch of different things. I, I know how to do oil change. I know how to change my oil. However, I don't have a lift, I have jacks. When the winter time is cold, sometimes you might get caught up at work or whatever the case may be. I know how to do oil change, but I don't like to do it when it's cold for those reasons I named before. So I take it to European Auto, they do it for me. I pick up the car and everything is done. You know, so like I said, I recommend DIYs, 
all the way. If you could do it, I recommend it. But sometimes uh, you just got to trust the guys and let them do it. So I let the guys in European Auto do all the stuff that I can't do. Uh, that's pretty much it. I like to give these guys a super shout out. Uh, they over there at 3480C Hampton Road. Haven't been over there for a little bit because this whole social distance, six feet. Give a shout out to all you guys over there. Thank you guys for keeping the car uh, alive and well for the most part and things that I hack up or DIY. That's pretty much it. I'll let you guys go. Edit this out. Try to have it quick.